Hey guys, Matthew here. In this video, we're going to talk about the polysurface, but before that, there's something we kind of skipped over and I didn't talk about in enough detail. So if I draw a line, I remember telling you that it had a start and an end. So I'll just draw a circle over these two things. So this one's the start here, and this one's the end here. Okay, and it goes from here to here. And if I draw a polyline, it's got a start here and it's got an end here. Okay? Now, and I go along this curve in this kind of this direction. Now, what's implicit in here, which I didn't talk about, is that this is impossible. there are multiple pathways. So I can only go down a curve in one direction. If I try to get this and join this to here, it'll say unable to join curves. So it's fundamental that a curve has a start and a single end, not multiple ends or multiple starts, which is another way of perhaps thinking about it. So the curve start and end can be the same, but it can't have multiple um, pathways of going. That's because if we call this point here t equals 0 and this point here t equals 1, then I can describe every other point on the line as some smaller number. So, sorry, the polyline. So if I took a line of length uh, 1, hold down shift and zoom right into here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple of circles. So this is the end and this is the start. And if I said I'm 0 0.38 along that line, then I know that in this case, because the length of the line is 1, that I'm 0 0.38 units along this, this line. And that means that that point would be there. And I can apply that to a larger line as well. So, you know, it's, it's all depending upon the scale of the line, but, you know, 0 0.38 units would be somewhere around there. And here, I don't know, I'm going to guess that it would be about here somewhere. Um, but the point is that that is actually unique, right? It's like there's only one point on this line that is, has a value of 0 0.38 as a parameter along it. The second that we have a second pathway on it, uh, that, that is no longer true. But there's two 0 0.38s. And that's actually a problem for computational geometry. So because of that, you can't join it. Now, this has implications with surfaces. So I'm going to make a plane. And then I'm going to make a plane with the vertical option, which will allow me to draw it just straight up. I'm going to put this on shaded so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And I can select these two and I can type join. And you'll notice if we drag down our command line a little bit to read what it says, that it says two surfaces or polysurfaces joined into one open polysurface. So Okay, that's cool. So we've got a thing called a polysurface now. Um, and I'm going to try and turn points up, and I can't do it. If I explode them, I can turn points up, and that'll let me do that. So I can't turn points on polysurfaces. I can only turn points on surfaces, curves, polylines, and lines. And a point's already a point, so that doesn't really count. Um, so that's interesting. Now let's try and see if we can create another plane that is there. And let's try and join all of these three together. And you'll notice that one of them misses out. That's because of the exact same reason I was, we were talking about with the polyline. That doesn't make much computational sense for it to join it in that way. The answer for this is a little bit more complicated um, and a bit harder to explain why you might not want this behavior and we'll get to it in the trimming and joining section in detail when we start talking about um, insideness, openness in a little bit more detail but effectively I guess the best way to explain it is that the edges these lines here must only ever have two polysurfaces touching them or sorry two surfaces touching them to make a singular polysurface so if you look at 
kind of 3D objects that you're used to, and the only one we know at the moment is box, so I'll draw a box, you'll notice that all the edges only have one surface touching them. Sorry, two surfaces touching them. So this one and this one. So each edge has two surfaces, never three or more surfaces. And that is a fundamental um, property of the polysurface. So the polysurface is quite a, a simple object. It just is a whole bunch of surfaces. So that box is a polysurface, and if I explode it, I'll get it into all of its faces. And I can choose to join some and not others together, and some and not other together. So I'm like, these geometry types don't make much sense and don't seem to have much value without uh, access to all of the transforms, which is in the next module. This module is actually quite small and it'll just concern with introducing you to the actual geometry types. So the important thing to remember about polysurfaces in the end is that they're made up of surfaces. You can't turn their points on in the same way that you can turn a surface's points on. Um, that you can only have two surfaces to an edge. And that's pretty much the important stuff that you need to know at this point. See you in the next video.